freedom, community, euphoria. These words evoke the themes of Euripides' Greek tragedy, The Bacchae, which is the latest production of the Trinity University Drama Department. The story begins with the rival of Dionysus and Thebes. The Greek god is bent on revenge. He plans to punish the royal household of Thebes for not recognizing his divinity, and particularly Prince Pentheus. So, now that we've got the basic gist, what exactly is the Bacchae all about? Well, to me, it's a lot about um, uh, people's relationships with uh, divinity. You know, Dionysus comes home to Thebes, and he has these followers and they lose themselves to to the dance and uh, to the scream. It's about the worship that we do for Dionysus and for me it's about the passion that he gives me that I didn't have in my previous life. You know Dionysus being the god of both wine and theater uh, is all about uh, identities being fluid so I think his his cult of the Bacchae who, who join him um, and then Pentheus, who does not, who refuses to, to lose himself to the scream and to intoxication. That, that's the central kind of butting heads of the play. I, I don't know. A woman's dress just seems so wrong. Perhaps you're right. Maybe it's a sight you ought not to see the women dancing secretly. No, I didn't say that. I'll wear a dress or skirt or what other, other, whatever other women's things you think look best on me. Looks best. Um, I'm playing Pentheus, who is kind of the, I guess, antithesis uh, to Dionysus. He's the prince, and he's kind of the voice of reason. He is, you know, structure. He is, um, you know, this, like, firm ruling hand. Dionysus is the son of Zeus, um, Semele. He is a Greek god. He's a very proud god. He's the god of fertility and wine and uh, I guess everything good in life. So what do the actors and director think about their show? It's unlike any other show I've ever worked on in that there's a lot of um, non-traditionalness about this sort of Greek tragedy that's going on. And it's extremely funny. Uh, it, it's a very entertaining play and they should definitely come and see it for that. So the coolest part of the whole show is uh, it's really a lot of work with uh, Shadows. Yeah, it'd be nice to bring in uh, some of those, you know, poses that you learned from Kristen. <laughs> it's been a really good time, and I have probably the best prop ever, which is a decapitated head. You can see the resemblance, right? Run into it. <laughs> While the head you just saw will be replaced with a death mask of Rodman, some other unique elements of this modern adaptation of the Bacchae include music written and performed by Trinity student Marcus Rubio and student-created choreography. I scored the play, I set all the Stasmons to music and turned them into pop and rap songs. I've never really done anything like this before. I've always wanted to write a musical and I feel like in this sense I kind of have somewhat achieved this goal through this. Well at first um, we collected a lot of um, images and sounds and Kyle had us choreograph a couple of movement pieces just so we would have a physical vocabulary and I watched actually a bunch of movies that were kind of like zombie movies actually um, because I liked that they had this uh, herd instinct that we kind of have um, as the Bacchae. As Bacchans, it's been an extremely collaborative process. Mm -hmm. And it's been really interesting to see how, um, how all of us can bring something that's individualized to a lot of the pieces, um, but still be a group together. And I think that we've kind of picked up on uh, some of that in the choreography. Countless hours go into putting on a play. Company members devote over a month of their time to rehearsing at least six days a week, four hours a day. I'd say that the Bacchae rehearsal experience is a lot different than any other rehearsal experience I've been in simply because it is so exhausting, I guess is the right word. We do a lot of running around, we jump up and down, we're screaming, we're dancing, we're running things over and over again, and there's a lot less focus on dialogue than there is on like movement and in kind of expressing yourself in a more physical manner. I basically don't start homework till like 11.30. So if theater rehearsals are so exhausting and time-consuming, why do they do it? 
because it's it's all it's awesome it's so much fun I, I every t every rehearsal that I come to I'm never disappointed in the group I'm never disappointed in myself it's always just a blast the reason why I like doing theater particularly at Trinity is because of the community and the family aspect of it I just enjoy it. it's like an escape too that's kind of why I do it just get away from everything else be somebody else for a minute you can't necessarily have every life experience there is to have by yourself and I think theater affords you the opportunity to have some of the more unique you know and crazy life experiences through a character and I think that's worth a few hours of your time. The actors describe Kyle's directorial style as collaborative and organic. I love Kyle as a director because he's very good at, at disarming his cast in a good way not disarming as in like whatever bad connotation you can make of that but very good at making them feel comfortable and you know the stuff the chorus is doing is very very brave and to, to have gotten them to do what they do and the, the group mentality that they have I think is a great testament to what, what he's done. He says just don't tell me, show me. So I, I really appreciate just kind of like okay you make a choice, make it, do it big and then I'll tell you if I like it and if not we'll work on something else. So why should an audience come to see Trinity's production of The Bacchae? People are intimidated by Greek tragedies, and they think Greek tragedy, oh, you know, it's really old, it's boring, it's not the way that we're doing it. <laughs> I think the appeal for students in this particular production will, will be a lot more interesting than what they think may have been produced, you know, a couple thousand years ago. The play has a, has a great duality about it, and it's, it's Robin's going to be cross-dressing, so... That's interesting. I think you should come see the show because the students uh, who are performing and the students who have put their design and, and uh, choreographic and musical talents to, to it have uh, really done a great job. They put themselves fully into it. With this show, what we feel is incredibly tangible and transferable, and I think that as everyone on stage loses themselves, the audience will too, and I think they'll walk away having had a kind of transcendent experience.